I've spent a month with the Asus Zephyrus G14, and as promised, I've run extensive battery life and benchmarking tests in all the different fan modes to see where we can get the optimal level of performance and efficiency, which this laptop does extremely well. Now, not only that, but now that I've spent a month with the laptop, I have a better understanding of its quirks and features, and we're gonna cover all of that in this video. Now, first and foremost, let's talk about the RAM situation. Now, as you may know, you only have one swappable RAM stick in this laptop. Now, that is a DDR5 RAM stick, and you are unable to go back to DDR4. With the new DDR5-based motherboards, the pin configuration is slightly shifted, so you will not be able to use your old DDR4 sticks inside of this new laptop. So if you were thinking, hey, I'm gonna go ahead and get the G14, I've got some DDR4 laying around and I can make a good upgrade, you won't be able to do that. You'll have to go ahead and upgrade with a DDR5 purchase. But I'll talk about how I think I can save you some money um, and later in the video when I talk about the pricing differences of getting you know, the 6700S versus the 6800S GPU. So that's coming up here in just a minute. I want to thank Best Buy for sponsoring this video, making it possible to create these in-depth reviews of the Asus Zephyrus G14 with the latest Ryzen 9 6900HS and AMD RX graphics. Best Buy is my go-to online and in-person store for snagging the latest laptop releases. I've found that they get laptops in sooner and keep their stock longer than any other retailer. Not only do they carry the most in-demand models, but are constantly providing some of the best deals you can find anywhere online. If you're catching this video in the first week of it going live and you're looking to pick up the Asus Zephyrus G14, you can order both G14 options right now. Best Buy not only offers convenient curbside pickup, which I used to pick up my model of the G14, but also super fast delivery on thousands of items so you can get to your creative work faster. Click the link in the description below to check out the Asus Zephyrus G14 as well as some of the other latest in-demand AMD equipped laptops. Now there's been a lot of concerns over the past couple years where brands have been giving us low quality RAM inside of laptops in order to cut costs. Well, I'm happy to tell you that the stock RAM that this laptop ships with performs very well. I went ahead and swapped out the stock RAM with a Kingston Fury DDR5 CL38 at 4800 megahertz and the performance was exactly the same. So keep in mind that when you purchase this laptop, the RAM configuration it comes with is good and it will not bottleneck your system. Now from a design standpoint, I really like this slight change in the laptop. Besides, you know, adding the webcam and giving us a 16 by 10 aspect ratio screen, a more subtle change was actually moving the speakers from the lower end of the keyboard deck to the upper end of the keyboard deck. Now this is great because normally on last year's model when you're typing or using the trackpad, your hands were covering those two speakers. So by moving them up, you're now having a better audio experience. And speaking of the webcam, now using it for about a month, I'm really impressed with the quality. It is a 720p webcam, but it seems sharper and clearer and more color accurate than webcams I've used in the past. So not only have they added a webcam, but it seems to be much better, which I'm excited about. Now, moving on to one of my favorite aspects of this laptop, let's talk about the battery life. You're gonna get the best battery life results on this laptop by going eco and silent mode. So basically how this works is you go into the Asus Armory Crate, you turn off the dedicated GPU by going into eco mode, and then you switch it to silent mode. And then also from there, I went ahead and clicked the Windows battery saver setting. From there, you can see incredible battery life for this laptop. Now, one thing that happens though, is it slightly diminishes the performance because you're no longer having access to that GPU, which I'll show you some of the exact results later in the video when I get into the performance benchmarks. Now, if you want pretty good performance and a decent battery life, you can go hybrid mode, standard mode, and silent mode inside of the Armory Crate. That'll give you pretty good battery life, actually pretty great battery life for a gaming laptop as far as productivity is concerned and streaming video. And then even in Photoshop, you're still getting around six and a half hours of battery life getting solid performance out of this laptop. Now, as you go ahead and jump into Premiere Pro, you can see the battery life quickly diminishes to a a little over two and a half hours. Now, if you want full performance uh, as far as on battery power is concerned with this laptop because it still will throttle the laptop a little bit while on battery power. You can see though with discrete mode and performance mode turned on for battery life, it drops the battery life potential dramatically. Getting only about five hours of battery life for productivity, about three hours for streaming video, 
about two hours for Photoshop, and then a measly one hour and 40-ish minutes while video editing. So as far as battery life is concerned, you're gonna find the most value out of the productivity, streaming, and Photoshop work of the battery life, rather than doing on-the-go video editing. Now there's two models available for this laptop, and I've had a lot of questions of which one you should purchase. Should you purchase the RX 6700S or the RX 6800S? Because those are basically the two options that you have. Now the RX 6700S is around $1699, depending on when you're watching this video, and the RX 6800S is around $1899. So there's roughly a $200 difference between the two laptops. But I would not say there's $200 worth of improved performance by going with the 6800S. I have the 6700S here, and I think it's the perfect amount of performance for this laptop. Now, there's a few reasons why. First and foremost, you're not getting that much performance lift by going to the 6800S. I've seen the benchmark tests from other videos, and it is only five to 10% more performance. Also, you're gonna be running higher thermal temperatures. And while interviewing Matt Monez recently, he said that the laptop actually shut down on him while he was pushing it to the absolute limit. Now, as a daily user of a laptop, you most likely will not be pushing the laptop that hard for that long. For me, the only time I see thermal temperatures above 90 degrees Celsius is near the end of 4K exports. On average, this laptop is hovering in the mid 80s for thermal temperatures with the 67 100S. For a little more in-depth comparison between the two models, you can see that there's only slight differences in the specifications. The VRAM is actually the same. Now keep in mind that there are more compute units, 28 versus 32. There is more memory speed. There's 14 versus 16. You have 80 watts of power draw versus 100 watts. You have a slightly higher memory bandwidth. RAM speed and stream processors, but it's not a lot. It's very minimal. So where I land on the debate between the RX 6700S versus the RX 6800S is I would take that $200 and actually upgrade the RAM because you're going to see more performance benefits by slightly higher RAM as a creative professional, maybe not as a gamer, but as a creative professional, you're going to see higher benefits from upgrading that RAM to say a 16 gig stick or a 32 gig stick inside of this laptop laptop, then you will go in for that extra bump in GPU. Now, if you're a gamer, you may actually get more benefit from that 6800S, but I mainly talk to creative professionals on my channel, so that would be my recommendation to you guys and gals. Now, though I've mentioned the average pricing, if you want to know the exact live pricing of both of those models, you can head down in the description below and click those links. Now, if you do make a purchase of those links, I will get a small commission, but at no extra cost to you. But of course, that's what keeps this channel alive and the helpful content coming your way. And now, without further ado, let's get into the in-depth performance benchmarks where I took this laptop and ran all kinds of different fan modes in Photoshop, After Effects, and while video editing in Premiere Pro. Now, first and foremost, this laptop had fantastic performance in all the different fan modes and settings inside the Armory Crate Center for Photoshop. I would say the optimal performance settings for cool thermals and quiet fan noise is going to be eco mode matched with silent mode while the laptop is plugged in. You're going to get about an 842 on the Puget Systems Photoshop benchmark with a fan noise of only about 32 decibels and thermals of 82 degrees Celsius. Now, if you want to get the absolute most performance out of this laptop matched with really good thermals, I would go for discrete standard turbo mode, which will get you a 939 in the Puget Systems Photoshop benchmark, 45 decibels of fan noise at 82 degrees Celsius. And that 45 decibels of fan noise is really not that loud compared to other gaming laptops running those same type of scores, thermals, and results. If I were to run the HP Omen and match that same score inside of Photoshop, I would easily see 55 decibels of fan noise. So this laptop stays cool, quiet, and has great performance. Now, if you go ahead and run this laptop on battery power alone, you're gonna see a dip in performance for sure. You're gonna see a 356 in the Puget Systems Photoshop benchmark, and that's gonna be on eco, silent, and battery only. Now, that's so that you can accomplish that really good battery life that we saw for this laptop. Remember, we're seeing a eight hour and 42 minute battery life. So you may not have this insane amount of performance coming out of the laptop for that much battery life. 
but if you want to get a little bit more performance, you would go ahead and switch off eco mode and you would still see around six hours of battery life inside of Photoshop. But if we're talking about maximum battery life, you're going to see about a 352 inside of the Photoshop Puget Systems benchmark. Now, moving on to After Effects, the best score I was able to get is a 795, which is a stellar score in After Effects. And that was running discrete GPU mode and performance mode for this laptop. Now, I ran a few other of the different modes while using this laptop and and what I saw is while doing battery mode with silent and eco, I got about a 361. Now, one thing that's really surprised me about this laptop is its ability to export quite quickly while on eco battery silent mode. So basically what that means is the GPU is turned off and we're still getting a five minute export time of the nine minute 4K clip, where when we have everything turned on to full performance, we're seeing the export time at around two minutes and 50 seconds. So we're actually only seeing about double the export time, which, which is a lot, but when you think about how cool and quiet and how long the battery would last using those settings, it's actually not that large of a trade-off. Now, if you have like a three hour movie compared to my nine minute 4K clip and you try to export it, yeah, that double the time for the export would be a substantially noticeable difference. But if we're just talking about short projects that you're working on, you can still get great export times from this laptop and get good battery life on the go. Now, here are a couple different fan modes and a couple different settings that you can set this laptop up and the different export times. Now, do notice one of my favorite setting modes was hybrid mode, performance mode, standard mode, which gave us about 78 degrees Celsius and a 42 decibel fan noise at a three minute and 35 second export time. I thought that 78 degrees Celsius and 42 decibels of fan noise was great uh, and that's having the laptop plugged in so this laptop does remain cool that new thermal vapor chamber is great with keeping this laptop cool it covers more of the motherboard and the components than last year's model so we're seeing a lot of great benefits by choosing this year's model over last year's model. This year's Asus ROG Zephyrus G14 is really something special. Now that we have the AMD CPU and AMD GPU working together, we're getting good thermals, great performance, and fantastic battery life. Now that isn't even talking about the new 16 by 10 aspect ratio screen, the speakers that have moved up for a better audio experience, a larger trackpad, a better keyboard, it just is a better device as a whole. And like I said earlier, it's almost a complete redesign with all these features that we've been waiting for, including now with a webcam. And then of course that vapor chamber. So you're having more performance, but it's still keeping those cool temperatures. Let me know in the comment section below which one you're considering choosing. I really appreciate the feedback. It always gives me some perspective into what you're thinking through in your buying decision. Otherwise, links if you're ready to make a purchase, likes if this video has brought you some value, and subs if you don't miss out on the future uploads. I'll see you here in the next one.